if you're going to be in this game for a long time, things like this are going to happen once in a while. And you need to be okay with like just taking a step back, taking a deep breath, and then just like rationalizing and figuring out how you're going to keep moving forward. And that's like by far been the biggest lesson that this property has taught me. You found the Real Estate Law Podcast. Because real estate is more than just pretty pictures and law goes well beyond the paperwork and courtroom arguments. If you're a real estate professional or looking to build real estate expertise, then welcome to the conversation and discover more at realestatelawpodcast.com. Welcome to the Real Estate Law Podcast. Jason Muth here with attorney broker Rory Gill from Next Home Titletown Real Estate and Urban Village Legal in Boston. And Rory, we finally were able to get this guest on the podcast after many, many years of trying. And I got to say, for people here in the greater Boston area, if you've been to any kind of real estate networking event, you know this person. If you haven't, then you know, you'll know you get to know this person really well. But Rory, this guy is like one of the best networkers I've ever met. Right. So if you're local to us, you probably already know him. Um, but if you're not from here too... Um, here's a story that's a multifaceted story that'll apply to just about anybody listening to the podcast. So everybody, um, even those outside of New England, you'll have a good some good takeaways here. Right. So so without further ado, uh, please welcome Kyle Curtin to the podcast. Kyle, welcome. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's it's such a pleasure to be on here. You know, I, I've been watching your guy listening and watching to, to your guys' podcast for quite a, a good amount of time at this point, and. Super stoked to, to be on and chatting with you guys today. Let, let me see if I, if I could do it right. Is it, what's going on, guys? Is that, the, <laughs> that's that's your thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like all over my social media. I think maybe I interact with this content or he just puts out enough of the interesting stuff. But I met Kyle a couple of years ago on Bigger Pockets, and I don't know how we got talking, but uh, you invited me onto your podcast probably over two years ago, this is 2021, and we talked for way too long. And I don't know who listened to that podcast. I don't even know if I listened to it back. So I was like, I don't know listen to this thing. I just <laughs> talked the whole time. But I, I think after that one, Rory, we kind of rekindled this podcast because uh, we remember back in the day we did eight episodes and then we kind of paused and had a baby. Uh, and then two years later, we we once again resumed podcasting. And I've been talking to Kyle about getting him on this podcast. And 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 one thing I should say, Kyle, this is our hundredth episode right now that you're on. So, uh, oh my goodness, bam! <laughs> <laughs> You've already reached that milestone, but you know we uh, the way the calendar worked out, I thought it'd be fun to have you on for episode number one hundred. Holy crap, guys! Oh my goodness, I'm like ridiculously honored. I mean, one to be on here in, in the first place, and two to be episode one hundred. Holy crap! Like, damn! <laughs> wow. So. Rory, why don't we let Kyle tell his story a little bit, and then a, a long list of questions just about just you know where you came from, <laughs> and, you know, as just this entity like in this real estate world here in New England. So, Kyle, can you please share with our audience, like you know, who you are, what your background is, uh, you know, where you got to where you are today? I would love to, my friends. So, my name's Kyle Curtin. I am a 22 year old real estate investor. I live and grew up in Tuxbury, Massachusetts. Uh, in December of 2021, I bought a three family that I house hacked with FHA, you know, same as, as most folks that are kind of jumping into the game. Couldn't recommend it enough to, to people out there. I owner rocked that thing for the year, you know, made the bank happy with FHA. And then I recently moved back to my parents' house in Tuxbury and I'm turning the two bedroom unit that I used to own or occupy into a medium term rental and kind of dabbling in that space a little bit. I've been furnishing it for a while, and I think next time around, I'm, I'm going to apply a lot more, you know, who, not how, and try and delegate out something like that, because I'm definitely not a professional at it. <laughs> but yeah, you know, and essentially, like, along with that, I am an investor-focused agent with Candor Realty out of Lowell. I, to you guys, you know, alluded to, I, I've hosted a real estate investing podcast called Creating Wealth uh, over the past couple of years. And I'm going through some chips with that right now that have been a lot of fun. I recently did kind of like a rebrand. I, I do kind of have my uh, a little bit of my stuff on that I ordered recently. <laughs> I see that. We got some, um, like, your hat, you got your sweatshirt, just like any good marketer. You're wearing your swag on the podcast. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. You know, and 
it's been a, a ridiculous amount of fun doing that. And I'm sure, you know, you guys can agree. It's, it's such a, a fun activity, you know, to be able to, to network and, you know, give people uh, like shout outs for their story and their, their companies and, you know, the kind of things that they're looking for. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just been a ton of fun. You know what I mean? And like, I, I've talked to a decent amount of people and it's, um, it's fun, you know, and recently I actually have been kind of starting some new stuff. So I actually, you know, have been focusing a lot heavier on the podcast and growing the community. So like I, I have a Facebook group around, uh, creating wealth. Definitely feel free to, to join guys. It's called creating wealth together. Oh, we're in it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I'm basically trying to, to grow the podcast a lot more, like have on guests that are from like the new England area. And like, that's kind of been the new idea. But then recently, like there was somebody that reached out to me from down in Florida and then a syndicator from out in St. Louis and, you know, asking to kind of be on and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Why not? So I'm still kind of figuring out what the new, like step is i guess you could say because <laughs> i thought i knew what i wanted but now i'm you know not really sure i guess but mm -hmm. anyway um that's kind of what i'm up to right now i have started learning a bit about like raising private capital and trying to like you know tie communities in together and like you know build something that's much larger than myself so that's been a lot of fun to learn about so kind of how i got started i'll, I'll keep it super super condensed mm -hmm. so essentially i fell into investing. So a couple months before I turned 18, I was sitting on my computer one day. I was bored out of my freaking mind. And some weird urge from the universe told me to look up what investing was. And that was 110% the best Google search I will ever make in my entire life. So essentially like, you know, it, it brought up like Investopedia and like, you know, I, I started learning about uh, like equities and the markets and like, you know, that eventually grew into like, you know, learning about time versus money and, and growing assets and, you know, just this new idea that got introduced to me of, hey, you know, there's actually a lot of other options out there than just working your nine to five for 40, 50 years, you know, betting on that 401k retirement, like hoping everything's still there and, um, you know, hoping that things work out, you know what I mean? And eventually like digging more into that, you know, I, I was super into like stocks and building like a dividend portfolio and you know eventually rich dad poor dad kind of uh you know found its way into my heart as with you know definitely you know many of, of your guys listeners if not all <laughs> yeah as as it always does that always seems to get woven into the conversation right oh yes that little purple book man i, I paid eight dollars for it and the return is is higher than anything like i'll ever do for the rest of my life like that book is is sacred to me man yeah, I mean, I ended up reading that and then kind of got the bug of like investing in real estate. And, you know, I, I tried a couple other smaller like entrepreneurial, you know, kind of like fixing and flipping like yard sale items like Gary Vaynerchuk and kind of like his model. Did that for a little bit. It was fun, but it didn't really stick as kind of like my thing. You know what I mean? Like it, it made me a little bit of money, but it, it didn't really like resonate with me a, a ton, you know? So eventually, you know, after that, so I went to a high school in Borica and essentially like I was doing HVAC, uh, had my HVAC job, definitely wasn't enjoying it, um, you know, right after I graduated. And that, in addition to learning about this new entrepreneurial title. Kyle, let's talk a little bit about that because I thought, aren't you still working a W2 job or are you still working your HVAC job or no? I am. Yeah. So okay. what I ended up doing was essentially like, I tried out middle sex for a year, got one year under my belt. And the funny thing was, was like, although I did like, you know, the, the core or like entrepreneurship classes and like the idea behind them in high school, like I should have kind of learned then that school wasn't really like the thing for me. Like I, I did. Okay. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't the thing that like really like got me excited. So I, I did my year there. Absolutely hated it. And the funny thing was. Although I enjoyed the classes, I didn't like how like structured everything was. So like when it came to like the entrepreneurship classes, right? There was like, oh, you know, you need to have your marketing plan done by like next Tuesday. And then you need to have your, um, you know, like other documents and like a paper written in like the next four days, the next week, two weeks, whatever. 
and I just I didn't like it. You know what I mean? Like I I, I realized then that like I really really like this space and there was definitely something here, but I need to be able to like be flowy and like try things out and like experiments and and stuff like that and kind of see what like really resonates with me. You know what I mean? So after that, I ended up kind of being faced with another decision and I ended up jumping back into the trade. I I got a, a decent job doing HVAC. I'm, I'm still at the same company that I have worked at since that point. Um, but definitely, uh, definitely looking for, for other things Yeah, <laughs> and, and trying to use a real estate as a vehicle to get there. Well, that's, um, it's, it, it's an easy vehicle to get to the next level whenever, whatever that level is. Um, you know, Rory and I are, you know, we both went through college. Rory went to graduate school because he's an attorney. I did not go to graduate school, but you know, I went to an Ivy league school and all the stuff you've talked about, like that stuff doesn't get taught like to us. And you know, I have not been in college for quite some time. So maybe the students today are learning something a little bit different, but Rory has been in college and grad school uh, in years since I have graduated. And Rory never learned a lot of this stuff, right? No. And it's such a shame we could help our clients out so much more if we actually had this background. We could have run our practices better. And from what I've heard, the past few years have actually seen a resurgence in teaching professionals how to operate the business of being a professional. But when I graduated, it was actively discouraged to a certain degree, and it certainly wasn't taught um, in school. So that's such a shame um, that's there. You're talking about education and W-2 jobs, and I know kind of in the circles where we run, W-2 jobs are often disparaged or dismissed. But I actually, I have a different view on it, and I want to get your thoughts. Um, what's the value of having a, a stable W-2 job if you're getting into the real estate investing space? Sure. So I think there's a couple different angles to be able to go on, right? And like, I mean, one from definitely the more um, more clear of like, you know, getting your paycheck every week, every other week, just for showing up and, and kind of doing your thing. You know, I mean, there's also the angle of being a lot more lendable. If you have that W-2 job that you've had for uh, like the past couple of years or, or what have you, and being able to get like, you know, an FHA or like a 5% down, to be able to jump into your first uh, like house hack or even buying a rental property outright, you know, without having to use like, you know, some sort of the DSCI loan and like that type of thing. So in terms of like lendability, I think it's a must because I mean, I, I haven't been 1099 um, full time before, but I can imagine, you know, when the back goes to look at your history of, of commissions and that type of thing. I'm not really sure like how, how they would look at something like that, I guess, kind of from like a risk standpoint, unless you're like super, super consistent. That's an area that I, I don't know too, too much about yeah, at the moment. But yeah, I mean, like you're definitely looked at a lot more highly when you do have a W-2 job and, and you're able to kind of dabble in, in the real estate space in different areas when it comes to getting traditional bank financing. And the other thing too, guys, another point that just popped into my mind is from a risk standpoint. So with my property at Lemonster, I've had a, a couple times where I've gotten knocked around quite a bit. You know what I mean? And like, that's, that's a whole nother rabbit hole that, you know, maybe, maybe we'd go down today or, or another time, but yeah, I mean like some of these things, guys, like whatever kind of property you have, whether it's like, you know, a one bedroom condo or like a 50 unit, like crazy syndication project, right? There's always those unexpected things that will come up. And like, as much as like we all glamorize like the cash flow and appreciation, you know, debt pay down, like the whole nine yards, I feel like the other part of that conversation that definitely isn't as sexy is with all that beyond wonderful stuff that all of us, you know, know and love so much. Um, with that is going to come a lot of challenges, right? So, like, when you have a W 2 job, I mean, I feel like it's a lot more easy to be able to like you know have reserves put aside and then sometimes when and some of those events come up that are four and, and five figures sometimes it's a lot easier to you know just kind of make things happen and and do overtime or like you know maybe dip into that emergency reserves depending on what it is you know that that income is coming in you know in a couple of days or next week or whatever it is you know i mean i've had i mean even like this winter alone my basement flooded out once because a, a water heater burst. It was like 12 years old. And that's, that's another conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, um, 
Yeah, but yeah, I found a water heater that burst. And because I've been living in Tuxbury so much, you know, I'll visit Lemonster once in a while to like bring furniture over or check on the building until I get the systems upright to be able to like really just stay out of there as much as possible and rely on the team and the systems to, to kind of, you know, keep everything running smooth, you know, but so I, I haven't really been as actively going over there. And this water heater, this happened probably like two months ago. It burst from the seam on the back of the water heater and I didn't find it for two days. So there was like five inches of water, like in the entire basement. And it's, it's a pretty reasonably sized basement. And I didn't really know what to do, you know, cause like it knocked my heat out because I, I had an oil fired boiler down there and, and the oil gun itself was probably like maybe three inches off the floor and it was on a pad too. So like that's how high, you know, the water kind of was. So it, it fried the motor on that thing, like wiped the unit out and I had no Did heat it, in my unit. You had no heat in the unit. Was, was it cold out? Absolutely. And like, that was the thing, like. It just, it was a really, really like funny turn of events because like the reason that I ended up going over there that day in particular was because a con yeah, a handyman screwed me over because of something else that he was trying to fix and like nobody was showing up and like that type of thing. So I, I kind of got that mentality of like, all right, like I'm under the knife for an insurance deadline. I'm like, there's something that I need to do like, like today, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like, I, I kind of just took matters into my own hands. And then I'm like, you know what? Like, I should probably check if there's oil in the tank because, you know, of, of how cold out it's been. And that's when I opened the door to the Sears to go down to the basement to find a glaze, like the, the light reflecting back up. And I'm like, that's no, not good. It's all me. And then like, that's what it was, you know, and, and that, um, that experience in itself, I mean, I, I learned a ton and like, that's, that's another thing that I can go down. Right. But that experience, it cost me, I think like a thousand bucks for a plumber and thank Christ and, and everything else that I had a, a pretty decent relationship from a plumber that I got from a very good uh, friend of ours, uh, Jason Regan, shout out to you, buddy, that was able to come out like the next day. And luckily there was isolations above the tank. So I was just able to valve it off and, and at least kind of isolate the, um, the Lake Placid that, you know, was now in my basement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds terrible. I mean, like these are the kind of things that you learn along the way and you know, how do you not get discouraged as a young new investor when things like that happen and they're inevitable? I'm super glad you brought this up, man, because the one thing, the biggest thing by far that this property has taught me, and I, I learned it two weeks after I bought the house, right? So essentially what my plan was, was during due diligence, I saw that this property had two oil tanks that were like at least 40 years old. Like these things were like a little bit concerning, you know, like based on how long that they've been there and, and they looked kind of rough, you know, I also had a, uh, an oil fired boiler in the basement and in one of the other units, there was an oil fired furnace. So essentially while I was, you know, walking around during the inspection, I saw, um, this black iron pipe that went to the, what looked like a regulator. It was like the size of like a small pizza and it was like this metal thing. And, uh, there was a gas shut off on it. And then like, it was just capped off. So I was like, huh, I'm like, I wonder if there was gas that was tapped down here because my master plan was right. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to call national grid. I'm going to see where the gas line is. And if this is a gas tap in the basement and if I can tap off of it and, you know, if all goes well, you know, I'll have them run the gas line in the springtime. I'll have them put the meters outside, tap, you know, multiple gas lines in the basement, and then I'll use a mass save heat loan which is absolutely beautiful get out of jail free card <laughs> and essentially convert everything from oil over to gas, you know, and then because it's a 0% interest loan, it's advertised often as, uh, it's a, like a seven year term, but I think it varies from credit union to credit union because I did it with Tuxbury and they gave me a five year term. But my point was, was like with something like that, like if you have to replace a furnace or something like that, instead of shelling out like five, six, seven, whatever, you know, is prices look like nowadays. And you're able to essentially pay cash for that through the use of one of those loans. And then you get five years to pay it off at 0% interest, you know? So you get to maintain your liquidity along with getting the result that you're looking for. Like for me, it, it came out to like, I think it was a little bit above six grand and 
my payment now for the next uh, four years is like 47 bucks every two weeks, you yeah. know? And like, it's, it's crazy. Like I freaking love it, man. But, but basically my, my point being, um, was I had that, that was kind of my master plan. Right. And then two weeks after I bought the house, I found two oil tanks leaking in the basement, uh, or both of the oil tanks leaking in the basement. And like, it wasn't anything crazy, but it was dripping like once in a while. Right. Like it had just rotted through the bottom and like, I'm very blessed that I found it when I did. And I instantly, like, you know, probably most other people out there, I panicked. It absolutely took my breath away. And I was like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? And, you know, I, I freaked out for a little while. And then it's literally like, like life, like punched me in, in the face. Right. And it was like, dude, if you're going to be in this game for a long time, things like this are going to happen once in a while. And you need to be okay with like, just taking a step back taking a deep breath and then just like rationalizing and figuring out how you're going to keep moving forward. And that's like by far been the biggest lesson that this property has taught me, you know, and, and there have been a couple times that, um, you know, with the five inches in the basement that like almost you, you get another rep in. Right. And like the way that I think about it guys is, you know, when things like that happen, it, it absolutely blows, you know, it, it's horrible. Like all of us go through it, you know what I mean? Once in a while, whether it's like a, a freeze of pipe or like, you know, a crazy tenant, like whatever is going on. And like, it's just, it's normal. You know what I mean? It's, it's part of the game. And, you know, as long as you're able to take, take those lessons, be able to take a step, brat, take a step back, rationalize and just figure out, you know, who you need to call to get this thing taken care of or what you need to do, uh, you know, to kind of start to like repair things like you're going to be okay. And I, I feel like the biggest part of that is once you're able to get everything fixed and like take a step back after everything's all over, be able to reflect back on that and take the lesson and be like, dude, like you just got a, a stripe in the game. You know what I mean? And like, you know, so now you have a different reference point because you've been through something that, you know, you might not have been ever, uh, you might not have ever gone through before. And like, that's the thing, you know, like, so once in a while, like, like you're going to get knocked around a bit, you know, it's, it's part of the game. But if you know that like, you're committed to like, you're just not quitting, you know, like just in black and white, like, like that's it. Like keep throwing, throwing at me, like whatever is out there because you're going to get through it and you're going to get a really, really crazy education when you do it. And like, you know, you're just going to be able to step back faster and faster and be like, oh, you know, I have a lake down here, but, you know, like shut the tank off, like, you know, stop the water from flowing and then run to Home Depot and just pick up, you know, an extension cord, utility pumps and hoses and, and just plug it in and, and let it rip, you know, and like, like what else is kind of, you know, to get worried about, you know what I mean? Do you, do you think that experiences like that are... Something that relying on your network has helped you get through because, you know, I could think about the past couple of years of you just constantly out there going to networking events and you're meeting people of all different walks of life. And I want to talk about that a little bit as to how it's benefited you and, and how you even started doing that in the first place. But I'd imagine that going to those kind of events allows you to build up a team of people that you can call you know you referenced jason earlier he probably knew a plumber for you to contact but what got you to start going to these networking events like many many years ago of course yeah so i to your point jason like your network is absolutely freaking everything guys you do not want to play this game alone and like there are people that play this game alone and you know they're extremely successful and like if that's your cup of tea perfect you know get out there and, and go crush it but i can tell you it's definitely a lot more fun and you have a lot more opportunities by, you know, just playing it with other people, you know, and to, uh, to kind of jump into the first story of like how I, um, you know, started to get going to networking events was, you know, like as time was going on and, you know, I was learning more about the space. I picked up kind of quick that, you know, this is a very people centric business, whether you're in the agency side, whether you're in the contracting side, you know, whether you're an investor, like whatever your role is, 
like you're going to need to be able to build up a team uh, directly or indirectly with a lot of other people to uh, start to work towards the vision that you're trying to get to. So essentially, it's kind of funny, like telling the story of, of going to my first event, because uh, I feel like there's um, there's a couple of things that I learned from that that I'm always super, super happy to share uh, uh, with people just starting off. Right. So it's a very interesting thing, you know, going out there and like meeting people and everything. And like, because like, what are we always taught as kids? Oh, you know, don't talk to strangers. So it's like, it's really interesting, you know, like basically like going completely against a lot of the beliefs that were kind of ingrained as you ingrained in you growing up and literally like just volunteering yourself to go out there being vulnerable and going out to make friends in places that like you've never been in before. So I actually, and I'm kind of curious if, um, if you guys know the, the woman who's the first woman that I met in this space that, that kind of got me started because this was in like, like 20, 2018, I believe this, this was a little bit ago. Um, her name was Lisa Manfredi and essentially, so the, the first meetup that I wanted to go to, it was on meetup.com and this woman, Lisa, Shout out to you, Lisa. I absolutely love you. It's been a little bit, but uh, definitely have to connect soon again. But basically, this woman, Lisa, was putting on a small event uh, with, you know, just like less than 10 people at um, Anna's Coffee Shop in, in Charlestown, Massachusetts. And basically what it was was, uh, you know, people would get together and play uh, Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow board game, right? And like everybody gets a different role and like really awesome stuff, right? And I wanted to go over and over and over again, right? But my anxiety was absolutely eating me alive. And I'd find every excuse in the book to not drive over there. You know, I'd be like, oh, no, it's my cat's half birthday today, you know? And yeah. I don't have a cat. So it, it made it a little bit harder to, to rationalize that one. Um, but eventually, I ended up, you know, kind of forcing myself to go, right? And, and it's something that I absolutely wanted to go with, like, like every part of me, right? But it was my anxiety of like, and the, the self-limiting beliefs as well of, oh, you know, this, you know, 18 year old kid that's like starting to like houses, you know, like what, what kind of value is he, you know, like, like nobody's going to want to talk to him and, and that type of thing. And I feel like that's a really common belief with people jumping into the space for the first time is like, oh, you know, all these investors, like everybody's, you know, so like, you know, selfish and like self-centered and like, you know, just want to, you know, do their own thing and nobody wants to work together and like everybody fights all the time. And I'll tell you, like, I couldn't be more wrong in my entire life. And I'm very, very happy to say that because I ended up forcing myself to go one night and, you know, I met this woman, Lisa, and, you know, some other people around, one of which that I just connected with at a meetup uh, a couple months ago that was really crazy because she was kind of like the second person from like five years ago, um, you know, that I kind of got to know. But mm -hmm. basically, so I ended up forcing myself to go and I didn't really know what to expect. You know, like there's a picture on my one of my Instagram stories from a wicked long time ago. I had like business cards and like I thought this was going to be like, a, oh, you know, like go and, and try and like, you know, get clients for agency and that type of thing. And I'm glad I was wrong as well. Because uh, essentially, like, you know, we played the game. We had a ton of fun. And meeting this woman, Lista, was my catalyst for her changing my life for everything. Literally, like, a complete, like, cut and dry, like, like mindset, like, completely, like, rewiring my brain. Because she um, essentially, like, you know, I, I kept going to these events. And, you know, me, her and a couple other people started meeting on like Saturdays and like she would bring a whiteboard and like, you know, we would talk about like the fractional reserve and like draw all this stuff out and like how all the systems worked and like, you know, time versus money. And she was just like someone that I've never, ever met before, you know, and she was financially free. Um, she was very into like the infinite banking concepts and like, you know, starting businesses and, you know, investing in real estate and different capacity. And she was just a very like free spirit, you know what I mean? Like, like someone I'd like never, ever met before. And like, we kept meeting and, and she showed me like just the power of, you know, building assets. And like, like right now she's, um, I haven't talked to her in a, a little bit, but the last time I did, um, you know, she was traveling with 
uh, like her, her boyfriend and, and their dog in an RV, like across the US and making like this huge trip. And like all of a sudden seeing that something like that is possible, like for anybody, you know what I mean? Like you don't need to be like a billionaire and like have like all this really crazy stuff going on. Like any of us can do this type of, thing, you know, and like, but essentially like from pushing myself to start going to these events, like ultimately changed my life because all it takes is one conversation with one person to completely change your entire world. And like, since then, you know, I, I kept networking in the big thing, the biggest factor in like growing my relationships has always been, um, sending direct messages to people on Instagram, Facebook, bigger pockets, which that might've been how, uh, how we met guys. I I'm not a hundred percent positive. I'd have to like really dig back. Yeah, <laughs> but essentially, it, it very well could have been absolutely, you know. And basically, like in in this message, right? Like you essentially just want to be as genuine as possible because what you're looking to do is just make friends, you know. And like like so, look up the people that are in the areas that you want to invest in, whether it's Boston, whether it's New Hampshire, like like Nevada, like like whatever you want to do, you know. Like it's with the power of social media, it's very, very easy, you know, kind of in this day and age to be able to find the people in the areas in the particular niches that you want to to meet, you know, and essentially like just shoot them a message and say like, oh, you know, like my name's Jason, my name's Rory, you know, like this is the type of thing that, you know, I do like I'm located in, you know, Newburyport, I'm located in, in Boston, um, you know, like I would love to hop on a call and, and hear your story. And yeah. the beautiful thing to um to your guys' point earlier is the amount of people in this space that want to genuinely help each other is like way more than than we can count. Right. So like the the people that are open to jumping on a call with you and literally just seeing how they can help you is insane. And like the more that you do that. Like you're going to build up relationships in a lot of different capacities extremely fast. And then the big part of networking is, I mean, obviously, you know, like the relationship building and like things take time and stuff, but you never know bigger picture who you're going to be doing a deal with, mm -hmm. who, you know, you're going to need, uh, like you're going to see if they have like a plumber in that area because your property is like, like doing really crazy stuff. Um, and like the power of networking is like one, I mean, it's a lot of fun, you know? And like most of my friends at this point are like 10 and 20 years older than me, if not more mm -hmm. than that in this space. And like, I couldn't be more happy guys, you know, because, because there's, like, there's no, there's no 22 year olds that are going to these things. Like you're such <laughs> an anomaly. Aww, right? <laughs> are you seeing new people coming to these networking events? I mean, you've been going, you go to everyone that I think exists. Yeah. So <laughs> you must know everybody in the world that goes to these events. But do you honestly, do you see new people that come? Absolutely. And once in a while, uh, I do find people that are a couple years younger than me. And literally, like everything and in my brain like freaks out, man. I'm like, holy crap. Like, here's you're that. the old, you're the old man now. <laughs> <laughs> Rory, I, I got to ask you this question, though, because, you know, you and I have been to a number of networking events and, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of personality types at these types of events. And I think that half the people at those events are, you know, have heads big enough that they can walk in and feel comfortable in a room like that. And a small percentage of people are probably like Kyle early on that had to muster up the courage to go. Right. What do you think, Rory? Yeah. And I mean, to be kind of effective and make any connections in the spaces, you have to have a degree of vulnerability if you're kind of going in there pounding your chest saying how great you are maybe that'll earn you a bit of admiration maybe it'll impress some people but you're not really creating the connections um the same way that when you're there um you know it, it's it's easy when you're insecure to to want to impress um, other people that are in the spaces but if you go there interested in learning about other people and you know, making your situation a little bit vulnerable to everybody else, I think you can actually make good connections with there. And that's what people like Kyle are doing well in this space. They're to make connections and not just to, um, you know, rattle off their resume. Yeah. Rory, I have to think back to when we first started going to networking events. It was before the baby. That was 2019. It was before the pandemic. But we had, I think we, you were in the space as a, mm -hmm. as a professional. I think I was 
interested. And then I think that we had just done like our first short term rental. I distinctly remember being on Bigger Pockets like in 2015. I, th I think back to the job that I was in at that time, and we did not have any other investments besides, you know, the primary home that I had. So I think we must have started going when we first, you know, maybe had that first investment or so. Does that sound about right? Like 2016, like kind of like, you know, when we started going to those events in Somerville and, you know, throughout Boston. There are boats. I may have been to um, some others just in the real estate space a little bit earlier, 2014, 2015, but we started probably going in earnest around 2016. Yeah. So I'm thinking back to this also, and you know, I'm, I'm many years your senior, Kyle. Um, I'm probably the age of your friends. Well, we're friends now, so I am the age of you. Exactly. You know, the people that don't have any investments yet, or just are super interested in learning the space, I think it's important that they. And if you're listening to this, and that's you, you're still welcome at real estate um, networking events. I will say that I mean I've been going to a few conferences lately because now that we're going all in with the short term rentals. You know, Kyle, you know that I've joined, you know, a mastermind on this and I just came back from a conference in Nashville. I'm going out to Colorado uh, on Monday to meet up with some folks I met at a conference I went to in Miami. And what's helped me a little bit in this space is is the credibility of having some properties. Um, I don't know if I would have as much courage if I was just starting fresh being like, well, I want to learn this space. Like, I feel like I could at least contribute something now that I am in the space and probably deeper in the space than a lot of people that are actually at the conference with me. And there are some that are far beyond where we are right now. But how do you think things have changed now that you you have your property, you have a multifamily, um, that you're a landlord, you're talking about medium term rentals, you've had some disasters happen there. Do you think things are different now with actually putting your money to work versus a couple of years ago when it was like just, you know, starting starting it out, trying to find that first investment, trying to figure out what all these words mean. Everything you've just said right there is not a conversation that most 22-year-olds can have. Yeah, no, I, that's a really, really good question, man. I definitely, um, I definitely agree. You know, so the, the things that I, you know, really enjoy talking about at this point are especially like situations like are really going so well with the property. Like, I feel like it, you know, kind of gives you some stripes, I guess, like kind of in the space. And uh, to your point, like, as always guys, like everybody ever is like, you know, always very much encouraged to, you know, go to any sort of networking event. And to your point as well, Jason, I feel like everybody, like, even if you don't have your first property yet, I feel like everybody always has something to give. You know what I mean? Like in terms of advice and like, because one thing too, and I won't go too deep into this, but the, uh, I feel like a large portion of this game is in your mind, you know, and like having faith and like self-limiting beliefs and like, you know, just having faith in yourself that like, like you're able to do this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? And like, it's, it's a really interesting, like, like mindset, like, like what your brain allows you to, to be capable of and, and start working towards. I'll kind of count myself off there because I can talk for hours about that. <laughs> yeah, no, m mindset is big in the space. I know that in the mastermind that I'm in, they have a second mastermind that I have not done yet that is all about mindset. It's called Limitless. And it is all about self-limiting beliefs and it's visualizing where you want to go and you know everything you've kind of talked about right there. Um, it, it's, it's, it's making it happen, even if you don't know how you're going to get there right now. But you're like, yeah, I know I'm going to get there, but I don't know how I'm going to get to the next step. That's what you have to figure out first, right? Exactly. Um, so why don't we get to our final couple questions that we ask of all of our guests, and then I want you to be able to tell people about your podcast, uh, sure. where people could download it, listen to you, uh, and then obviously if if you're listening to this and you show up at any meetup in the greater Boston area, you will meet Kyle because he will be there. <laughs> <laughs> so Kyle, we ask these questions of all of our guests that come on the podcast uh, as a way just to wrap things up and get to know you a little bit better. Um, the first question is if you can get on stage for a half hour and talk about any subject in the world with zero preparation, what would it be? I'd say definitely, definitely mindset and like, like self limiting beliefs, uh, habits, the power of habits is, is something that's ridiculously, uh, interesting to me and like, just kind of like, I mean, really yeah, like the mindset, like I feel like it can go so, so deep. 
and like i love reading books on like self-development and and that type of thing and like literally like what are the things that are holding each of us back from like getting to that next point of where we want to be you know and like i'd say would definitely definitely come to like uh the power of networking i, I mean that's that's definitely um definitely another one that i'm super passionate about and yeah i mean like just just kind of putting yourself around around the people to to keep moving forward and um open-mindedness um probably would tie in there and like you know just just being open to like all of these like million bajillion ideas and like different ways to do things and you know different people that are in like different strategies and i i'd say that's a really really big one um i mean even to kind of tie in as well as like vulnerability you know like just to your to your point rory is like allowing yourself to just be open you know what i mean and like like tell people what's going on like the good and the bad and it's it's really interesting like especially with social media you know kind of the society's kind of norms with what like the expectations like for social media you know like um like a lot of people typically only kind of post when things are going great you know and, and that's fantastic don't get me wrong like everybody's got their style everybody's got their taste and like everything's fantastic right but i feel like it's it can be extremely powerful to put out there the things that you know maybe are not going so well because the amount of people that will come out of the woodwork and tell you like oh man like you know i i had like you know 10 inches of water in my basement you know like this is kind of what i did this is who i talked to like if you allow yourself to put yourself out into the world like crazy things are just going to happen, you know, and, and people are going to come out of the woodwork and like, you're going to grow, you know, like if you're like just completely like a hundred percent authentic and like, just put your, your crap out there, like everything's going to be okay. You know, it's, we're all I mean, playing a game together. You know, if you're, if you're not doing that, nobody knows, you know, so, you know, there is that fine line, but you know, if you need help with something, if you put it out there, a lot of times people that have the same situation, you know, would love to chime in. I think people, you know, like to participate and help each other, especially, especially in the forum. It depends on, you know, Facebook groups tend to be, they could be terrible or they could be great. It's a good, yeah. if, if the quality of the people that are in the group, but you know, I found that some of the Facebook groups that I'm in are extremely helpful because it's a lot of people that want to help each other. Second final question we have, tell us something that happened early in your life or career that impacts the way that you're working today say they i would say meeting lisa to mm -hmm. be honest with you literally like one relationship like completely like like changed the trajectory of my entire life in like multiple different areas if it wasn't for that one event like i don't know where i would be you know and like that's that's really what i pin everything back to is like that woman was was the catalyst you know for for starting to think a little bit differently and like you know, look into a different way to live your life and a different way to think, like, you know, different ways to like, you know, build up habits. And like, I feel like it, none of it would have ever happened if it wasn't for Lisa, you yeah. know, and it, yeah, <laughs> but I'd say that's definitely uh, one of the biggest ones. Yeah. We, we hear that a lot of people have on this podcast, people reference one person that happened early in their life that, you know, was influential for whatever reason, good or bad. Final question. Tell us something you're listening to or watching or reading these days. So one book I read very, very recently that was another one that, that kind of um, really opened up my mind was The Gap in the Game. I, I'm kind of slipping on who the author is. I should know because this, this book hit me like a truck for a lot of different reasons. But like essentially, like I highly, highly recommend this book to absolutely anybody out there. Um, I, I just read through this one very very recently and it basically like it was another like pretty big shift in the way that i looked at things and like the way that i looked at you know the future and the past and you know like my vision and and progress and like because it's a really interesting animal guys and, and i'm kind of curious like what what your thoughts are on this is so essentially like without spoiling too much of that book because i like i said i highly recommend it there's essentially two schools of thought, right? There's the gap, which is essentially, you know, looking at that's pretty much like the distance of where you are and like how far you've come, right? And like, like keeping track of like those small little wins that you're having every single day, because every single one of us, 
is winning in one form of another. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about business. You know, like if you went to the gym today, like, you know, if you, you know, had a, a fun, like phone conversation today, like, you know, if, if you, you know, like hugged a, a loved one or something like that, like it's, I feel like it's a lot of stuff that's often overlooked, but that kind of brings me to the gap, uh, which is essentially um, basically the distance between you, you and your total vision. And like, it's, it's a different kind of mindset because essentially like you could think about it like, oh, you know, like, well, why don't I have my vision yet? Like, why am I not on the right path? Like, you know, things aren't going well. And like either of these mindsets will send you down like a down spiral, whether it's, it's good or it's not so good, you know? And like, it's just, it's a really interesting way to look at even like different, different parts of your life, you know, like physical fitness. So the gain is kind of where you've, what you've achieved and the gap is where you're heading exactly the gap is is between where you are now where you want to get huh rory do you know that book i've that? I never heard of that book before no i love that book guys it's i like awesome. i like the gain side of it i know a lot of people are uh, about vision and where you want to be in you know six months five years whatever and it's good to build those kind of plans um but I think it depends on where you are in your life too. Um, you know, if you're still in your 20s or 30s, I think that having that vision where you're headed is probably really good. Not that I don't want the vision, but I I like to look. Actually, I look at the gain and I look at. It's easy for me to remember different parts of my life. You know, it's easy for me to remember when I was your age, Kyle. Like, um, it's easy for me to remember when I was 30 years old. Like, I, and I, I date a lot of these things based on music or where I was living. And I think about, wow, you know, where I am today versus that point. And I still feel like that same person in the past. And you'll figure this out 20 years from now. You're going to still feel like you're that 22-year-old. Because it's hard for us to shake those things. It's hard for me not to think about that kid in college or the kid right out of college. But, you know, there have been a lot of gains since then. And sometimes we don't appreciate those gains as much uh, if we don't really think about them. And I try not to think too much about the past. I try to keep going forward. But... I don't know if this is part of the premise of the book, but it is good to you know take a pause and realize how far you know one has come. That doesn't get me down. That that makes me happy, frankly. Exactly, I, I totally agree with you, Jason. And I feel like it's it's really interesting because like I feel like you need the blend and like the balance of both of them. So like one thing that's that I started doing um, that's been instrumental for me is uh, before I go to bed every night, I have a journal and I write down. Uh, um, the wins that I had that day and then in the other column I write the wins that I'm hopefully going to have tomorrow and it like as time goes on like you're able to see these entries from like yesterday and, and a week ago and a month ago and like you're able to flip through and be like okay like I am making progress you know in, in different areas because I feel like it's super important to even like once in a while to reflect back and be like oh okay like you know, things are going well. And, and to your point, Jason, like, you know, this is who I was then. Like, look at how, like, my habits have changed and, and look at how, like, like the next thing that I'm into now. And like, yeah, it's, I feel like it's super important to have, you know, both sides of the coin and in different contexts, you know. Rory, I think I'm going to have to journal before I fall asleep on the couch. And I think that my thing <laughs> is going to be if we get if we get Cecily to bed before 10, right? Does that, does that, count? <laughs> that happens every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Rory, final observations for Kyle. I'm just kind of impressed here, and I didn't really articulate it here, how everything you have is kind of one grand endeavor that works well together. So even when you're talking about the disasters that happened um, in the basement in Lemonster, everything that you went through there, there are a lot of really concrete and practical things that you can bring to your investor clients when you're working as an agent. You know, just by dealing with that, you've built, you've grown your network um, by adding, you know, by adding a, a reliable plumber in the area. You have gained familiarity with um, the Mass Save uh, loan programs. You know how to do, um, you know, you're closer to getting the, the gas hookup. You, you've learned all these different things that are of practical significance. Now, of course, you wish your basement didn't flood, but uh, everything that you're working there, it all kind of works together. And I know a lot of people in this space will have, you know, they might work as an agent, they might be an investor, they might um, be a podcaster, you are all three of those things. But everything you're doing helps inform the other areas. And, uh, and uh, you know, not just um, not just kind of a, a, a loose sort of way, but in a real concrete, practical way too. 
Thank you so much, Rory. It, it means a lot, man. Seriously, you know, and it's like that's an interesting thing too. Is like you can look at these areas as like completely separate endeavors, like your your agency business, your investor business, like you know whatever else is going on. And I feel like it it does kind of make a lot of sense, at, at least for me, to kind of join everything together, especially in in the real estate space. You know, like whatever role that you're playing, because I feel like there's so much overlay. That like, exactly, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, like the relationship from like the investor side and Lemon Sir of, of that one plumber, I absolutely love that guy, you know? And like, I don't mind like, you know, definitely paying him, you know, a bit more for, for helping me out. And like, he's a phenomenal guy. And now my the agency side, like if there are clients that, you know, are, are looking for, you know, places around there or, you know, something happens. Now I have a little bit of value to be able to give um, to be able to to give that referral to someone else and and hopefully help them out, and I, I feel like that's a power that like all of us have, and like it's just the beauty of relationships, guys. Like it's it's such a an amazing animal that will translate to a lot of different areas of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Well, Kyle's the master of building relationships, and again, if you are in the greater Boston area, you either know him or you will need him if you go to a meetup. Um, if you'd like to hear more from Kyle with his podcast, it's Creating Wealth with a K, right? So Creating Wealth, but you got to put K right before it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And that, those are your initials, KC. I see yep. what you did there. Look at that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, Jason? Like Most people like won't really get it. And like, yeah. I, I never really like talked about it much, but that's exactly what it was is like my first like brand type of thing was just like Kyle Curtin real estate. And I was like, oh, like, how can I like put together like, like words of like for a title? Like, I don't know. And that's what it stuck to was like, oh, Kyle Curtin real estate, KCRE. And then, well, and like, it just you lined up. going with it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, the business that we, when we launched the, the short term rental business officially last year, it's, it's called straightforward short term rentals and the straightforward part starts with str like short term ah, <laughs> not right there. we haven't we haven't we've been talking about that much on the podcast we will and and rory's business next next home title town we named that back when boston sports teams used to win a lot of titles uh <laughs> that has not happened a lot lately but maybe the bruins will this year who knows so. hopefully yeah they yeah pre these the team last night they're they're looking great yeah they're uh, almost gonna beat they have four well as of this recording they have four more games in the regular season and if they win two more they win the or they get the uh, i think they, they break the record for most wins uh in a single yes. season by a team but we'll see what happens there this is this podcast is going to come out many many weeks after uh the season ends uh hopefully they'll still be <laughs> playing in the playoffs rory where can people find you if they want to reach out to you um, they can find me here at my brokerage that's next home title town or online next home title town.com or my law practice, Urban Village Legal. That's at urbanvillagelegal.com. All right. And you can find me, Jason, at nexthometitletown.com. If you'd like to be on the podcast or you have comments or questions, uh, please reach out. We love five-star reviews if you want to give us one. And we really appreciate your listening to this podcast. I hope you've enjoyed hearing Kyle's story on episode number 100. Kyle, thank you for being our guest. We'll have to have you back so we can hear more about your endeavors as time goes on. Uh, I'm sure that three of us will hear them offline a little bit more, not put it officially on audio and video, but you're always welcome to come back and, and tell more stories because uh, you are a ball of energy. You are an amazing networker and you have more hustle than most people that I've ever met. So I keep so much, guys. It was a, a huge honor and I'm very, very blessed to, uh, to know you guys and, and be given the opportunity. Well, likewise. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Rory. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. This has been the Real Estate Law Podcast. Because real estate is more than just pretty pictures, and law goes well beyond the paperwork and courtroom arguments. We're powered by Next Home Title Town, Greater Boston's progressive real estate brokerage. More at nexthometitletown.com. And Urban Village Legal, Massachusetts Real Estate Council, serving savvy property owners, lenders, and investors. More at urbanvillagelegal.com. Today's conversation was not legal advice, but we hope you found it entertaining and informative. Discover more at realestatelawpodcast.com. Thank you for listening.